Welcome to Understanding Project Management Discussions. My name is Dave Barrett and my guest today is Jerome Hilton. Our discussion topic today is scope planning, but we will focus on the first stage of scope planning, which is gathering requirements. Jerome works for a software development company, so our discussion today will be directed towards the types of requirements processes that take place in a software organization. Please welcome Jerome Hilton. Hi, Jerome. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining the talk. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Okay, so today's today's uh, discussion that we're going to talk about is is all about kind of the, the the part of planning where we define what the project is going to do. Uh, you know, known as scope planning, but it's really defining, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, it's answering the what part. So, you know, I, I kind of like to start with, you know, the, the, where we start is kind of in requirements. So just tell us about your, you know, your experience with that. You know, how do you, how do you approach requirements or, you know, kind of getting what the, what your clients or customers or, or you know, uh, stakeholders want? So tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so my project management experience um, as it stands today is typically software project management. So typically with like feature delivery. Um, so when we talk about gathering requirements, it's all about getting the right people, the right stakeholders from across the business in the room together to understand kind of what the definition of, of done actually is, right? So, you know, customer support, what do they want to see in that end product and what would they consider done for the product? What does software development consider done for the product? How do we release the product from a, from a release management or program management perspective? Um, what's the go-to-market initiatives that, we're, that, we're gonna, that are gonna follow with that feature, right? Like what's the campaigns? What are the marketing collateral, the website updates, um, et cetera? Like what type of pricing changes are we going to need is there any type of sales enablement planning that's also going to be required? So really just getting a good, a good set of representation from around the business to understand what that definition of done is really is, is how we gather requirements today. So how do you get those? So that, that was a whole lot of things that you just described, like all kinds of cool things with regard to, and, and specific to the software industry, which is, which is, which is, uh, you know, kind of cool like software is like a whole aspect of, of projects like the, the software industry but like how do you get those uh the answers to those questions what's the process that you that you go through yeah so okay so we, we oh sorry <laughs> so we break it down into into two stages so we break it down into kind of the software delivery stage and then the go-to-market stage so for let's talk strictly about the software delivery stage first um, it's again about getting feedback from the right people. So typically in the room is like myself, who's like a program, a software program manager. So how do we deliver the software? Um, a technical lead, so a technical software lead. Um, we have product management. So they're out there getting, gleaning information, you know, from the industry, from our customers on how we should be shaping our products or how we should be making our products. So they're bringing that feedback and they're telling you know, the software development teams, what we want to work on. So if they say, you know what, we need to build a car with, with two seats, with two front seats. I'm, I'm just being very general. Yeah. Um, and then also customer support would, or customer experience would come to the table and say, you know what, we really need that car to be, you know, X tall, X wide. And we really need the seats to be plush because that's what our customers are from, from the customer calls that I've been getting, that's what people have been saying. So that's kind of how we start things. So that's how things start. We get in a room, we start talking through requirements and we start um, documenting all those requirements. All the things that are gonna need to be done in order for us to say, you know what? This software is shippable and ready to move to pr production. So right. that's how we kind of glean right. that information from a, from a requirement. So who, who's making that? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've got conflicting requirements. I'm sure the you know, customer experience people want something, the technical leads go, oh, we can't do that. Or the, yep. you know, the, the people who are going to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the security people might, you know, say, oh, we can't do that either. And, and how, who's, who's, who's refereeing 
potentially conflicting requirements or who comes up with the list at, at so, the end of the yeah, day? So, so typically I'm, I'm typically refereeing or like um, driving the conversation, like steering, yeah. making sure, you know, everybody's got their, got their say, documenting everything. That's really my job. Um, it's the job of product management though. The, the, it, the product manager owns their own line of business. So right. for instance, if there's, there's various product managers at, at my company, I want to say there's probably 10 that each own like a vertical slice of, of the business or like a, you know, profit loss statement, a PNL, right. if you will. So they kind of have the last say in, in terms of, you know, getting all that feedback from around the organization and saying, okay, we're going to build this thing that has these things in it. So all the people are providing input and then it's the product manager that kind of hones in on what exactly we're going to be delivering to the end customer. Right, right. So that, that's cool. That's, a, that's an identification of a, of a, of a role, the product manager that, that you know, you would, would be, I'm sure, working closely with. Very uh, closely with. Very yeah, close. So now, tell me a little bit about a product manager. They're like we're diverging a little bit from scope, but do they continue on in the project? Do you... As you're managing the project, are they continued to be involved or do you that's sort of a, leave them that's behind? A, that's a great question. So they're typically more front end loaded. So again, gathering those requirements from the market, gathering the requirements from customers, gleaning information from internally within the company, and then bringing that to that like requirements or kickoff stage where we're kind of documenting all the requirements. Typically the product manager then steps away. So once we figured out, yeah, we want, you know, a car with two, two plush seats, then they step away. And then in, in my company, we have what's called a technical product manager that takes those high level requirements and then breaks it down. Okay. So we need to build a car that's blue. Now we need to build it, you know, this, this yay high, this yay wide. And they're, they're really breaking the, breaking the high level um, requirements that the product manager had set out and really, um, really makes it into sizable chunks that the development team can actually work on. So that's an interesting segue into um, breaking it down into, into deliverables or whatever. It sounds to me like work breakdown structure. Is that, is that what you're doing there or is that sort of a hybrid of that? It is. It's, it's, it's basically, yeah, it's basically a technical work breakdown structure. So yes. Right. So we're taking that high level requirement and then breaking down exactly what we need to achieve that high level requirement. So yes, it's a, it's a work breakdown structure in, in not so many terms, but it's right. typically managed by the technical product manager in that sense. Right. Great. Now, do you then take that on and, and work with that and enhance it within your project team or does a technical product, the, tell me about the technical product manager. Do they then continue on with your project as a project? So they're, so they're Im embedded within the development team. So am I. So we're working day to day to figure out, you know, are there issues, are there risks, right? Like they're, they're there from a technical perspective. Like I'm a software project manager, but I don't know how to write code but I understand software development, right? I understand the software development life cycle. I understand, you know, what's needed to, to build and develop software and to release software and go to market plans. So I more so look at the holistic picture, whereas the technical product manager only looks at building that, you know, that vertical slice of, of software delivery. So I'm looking at what happens before, you know, when are we getting together for that technical kickoff? When are we starting development? When are we starting testing? When are we going to release the product? Then when are we going to have the go-to-market kickoff? So I'm kind of like the, think about me as like the program manager, really right. bringing everything together holistically to actually get it within the customer's hands. Right. No, that's an, that's an interesting um thing that you've raised and that this is true of many of of many different industries not just software where it, it's often asked does the is the project manager are, are they are they able to do the work you know within the project are they are they able to do exactly what the work is so in your case write code or or you know, in a, in a, in a construction project, are they able to do each of the tasks? And, and the answer is, you know, many, many people have many different answers to that, but the answer is usually no, they have appreciation for it. It's very important that you understand, you, you know, what software does, you, you understand the software development process so that you're not, you're not, you know, you, you, you can interact with the, with the, 
the technical people on your project and the programmers and developers and so on, but you're not necessarily, uh, you know, a, a, a computer like programmer. An expert, exactly. An expert. Ha however, what I will say is if you do have experience in that field, it can only help you, right? Because then you're yes. able to kind of challenge your stakeholders and say, you know, if uh, John tells you, you know what, it's going to take me three weeks to get this done. You can push back and say, hey, John, this is only three lines of code. You know, you're only changing one, one area of the product. This should really take you three days. Like yeah. having that context really helps you to be right. a project manager. Right. So even kind of even not even being a, not being a dev myself, I still have the experience and I've been around software development enough to be able to do that pushback. So yes, to your point, you don't have to be a technical expert, but you do have to have a certain level of knowledge within your field to be successful, I think. Yeah, yeah, you have to know enough. I mean, I, I think it's a couple of things. One is you, you don't want to be snowed, you know, like, right. like right. you know, for them to say it's three right. weeks and then they, they spend three days and they have 12 other days of, mm -hmm. of, of not, of not yeah, working, okay. um, that, which could happen. And the other thing is you're just able to command the respect, you know, or, or get the respect of the team. That's, they, that's exactly They right. have to explain everything to, to, to the project manager in simplistic terms. Like, you know, okay, let's now dumb it down for the PM. Then right. they're not going to see you as a, as, as an, as an equal or as a, you know, as a, as a, you know, overseer, overseer. Project, you, yeah. It's a funny role that you've got because you need to, you need to oversee but you're not necessarily you're not better than them at their key skill. Like they're they're probably in most cases more technically adept Absolutely. at whatever it is than you are. But you've got that you've got other skills and abilities and so on. And that's how it interacts. Um, going back to the requirements versus the definition, because we, we you know we've kind of talked about okay, there's there's a bunch of requirements and the product manager and the technical managers and the different stakeholders are involved. They're going to come up with a big pile of things, but what your project do, does is probably a little less than that. Do you see is that is that something that causes a lot of friction or a lot of a lot of conflict or do you see that's just the job of the product? You know the 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 the, the ability of a of a product manager and a project manager can kind of cause that you know because what what i've noticed most most customers want this you know this and then you, you're able to give them this and, and how do you find that process is to to manage yeah that's a that's a really great question so that i think that goes back to my to my original answer when i said inviting the right stakeholders to that initial conversation is is is, is paramount it's very important right so two two stakeholders that need to be in the room our customer experience, I think, and, and a technical lead. So if customer experience is telling us we need that car to have two seats and the technical lead says, mm, well, in, in order to have a car with two seats, it's probably going to take a month longer. It's, right. it's then the job of the product manager to go, okay, why does the car need to have two seats? And then customer experience can maybe say, you know what, they've been, they've been begging for that feature. And then we can say, you know what, that justifies the extra month of development then. Let's, right. let's go ahead with that then. And then the yes. product manager, you know, stamps the, puts the rubber stamp down and says, you know what, we're making a car with two seats. And then the technical product manager can then break it down further. Right. So it sounds like there's a lot of negotiation, discussion. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It, it, this is where the interpersonal skills, the, the ability to communicate with people and not get into a, you know, try to look for those win-win situations as opposed to no, we're not doing that. And you, you know, you, you get into, into fights and, and, and so on at that, that point. Now, what about, so go a little further now into, in, into the devout. So we, we've got, we've got the requirements, the tech, we've got the sort of work breakdown, or at least what, you know, and again, it, it might be called work breakdown, or it might be called just breaking it down into its components or, 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 yep. you know, yep. um, features, you know, for example, is, is, but, now, what else happens in terms of defining what those things are? Like, you've got to get these things developed. What other definition happens at that point? Like, you know, in terms of, you know, describing their, their the features or describing the characteristics of the feature of the of the things you're creating. Like yeah. So done there. Yeah. So we we take an approach called like a user story. So we yep. we try to put it in in the sense of like, what do we want the feature to do, and how do we want it to do it. Um, once we have all like, you know, if it's, you know, five, 
you know, overarching user stories, how can we break down those user stories again into those vertical slices that can actually be worked on in separate chunks. So without, without going into like too much detail, um, really trying to drive the conversation where we're talking about those, you know, for instance, five user stories that we can then break down further, I think is like the goal of software development at least. Um, when we talk about a work breakdown structure for the entire program, I'm looking at like, how long is it gonna take to, to complete software? How long is it gonna take to test the software? How long is it gonna take to release the software? Um, at the same time, can we, can we start user documentation? Can we start uh, knowledge-based articles? Can we start a, a, a video to help customers along the way? Um, um, do, we need to, do we need to have a campaign alongside of that? Do we need to update the website? And like, when can we start those activities, right? So getting together with those necessary stakeholders to understand, you know, what they need to be able to start their work and then building back that work back schedule is really my job. And I think that's the work breakdown structure that I put together. It's right. really understanding, you know, when can you start this task and when will you realistically finish it? And what do you need to start and stop the task? And then building out a whole schedule based on that understanding. Right. So those other, those other components that you're talking about, are those things that would generally be within the scope of your project or are you more identifying that, you know? No, ab absolutely within my project. Right. So not only, not only building the software, but then how do we get the software out the door in a, in a really succinct way that our customers, once they get it in their hands, they feel good about it. They have documentation to be able to understand how to use it. And they have training videos to be able to understand, you know, where to plug things in and how to how to utilize it to the best of their ability and you know having a nice shiny commercial to make them understand it even better um, those types of things I I'm I'm really focused on especially now right. in my role I think it's becoming ever important right it's not just about building great software it's about enabling your customers to be able to use that software in a really useful way so how, how do we do that and how do we bring teams and people together within an organization to be able to do that in a really timely fashion? Because software, software and the tech industry is quite, um, there's quite a lot of competition and things move very fast. So the quicker you can do things and the more efficiently you can do things, the more successful you'll be. So really getting good at that, building that muscle is extremely important, I think. Yeah, where do you um, where where do you um, um, store the information? Like, like, tell me a little bit about the um, the the like the details of all of these things. That, like, where where are you putting these things? Like, it, yeah, you're you're. There's yeah. got to be somewhere, right? Because you're you're coming up with all these characteristics and information, and and where does this stuff exist? So they exist in like disparate tools, right? Like if someone's building a campaign and I don't know, Adobe editor, they're building their campaign in Adobe editor, but where I'm managing the project is in a program called smart sheets, which is like a, think of it like Excel and Microsoft project on steroids. Right. So we've, we've bought this software that kind of um, puts the two together and really allows us to build robust project plans, but then also be able to report on those project plans. So really robust reporting and dashboarding that we can roll up to the, to the, um, to the executive layer of, of the organization. So yeah, it's a tool called Smartsheets, but think of it like Microsoft Project and Excel put together. It's basically right. the way to put it. No, it's yeah. interesting. So that's where we're housing everything today. And it's quite useful. So really working with the stakeholders and understanding what the task is that they have to get done, how long it's going to take them to get it done, if there are any dependencies on that particular task to get it done, et cetera. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really good. So, um, and then do you find, do you find when you're, when you're, um, um, you know, in the midst of, of executing the project and producing, are you going back and referring to that information or, or how do you see that? Absolutely. And right? Like when we talk specifically about scope, are we keeping within scope? Are we having to, you know, veer away from scope? Are there any risks in the project that are causing us to veer away from scope? And if we do have to do that, you know, what levels of the organization do we need to get involved to then be able to make those change orders or to, to be able to pivot in like a new direction is extremely important. Yeah, no, it's good. Good. Okay. Well, um, overall, uh, 
uh, Jerome, I, I thank you for the, your your talk on on scope and so on. It's been a really interesting uh, interesting discussion. Sounds like you've got a you know really challenging role that you've got in terms of your organization. So, anyways, yeah, a lot going on. <laughs> really appreciate the, the the discussion. So, thanks very much.